This is Austin and today I'm going to show you how to create a simple event registration form and integrate it with PayPal. This form is a multi-page form so on the first section we're going to ask for the attendees information which I've already pre-populated. I've also added save and resume features along with a progress indicator bar and this is good practice for when you're creating a multi-page form. That way if the user gets partly through your form they can save their answers uh, they'll be given a unique link and then they can come back within seven days to finish filling out the form. Moving on to the second page of the form, uh, we use a couple different features found in Formstack. First being uh, conditional logic. So if you click no for if you're attending the fundraising event, it will actually hide the two fields below. And then if you click yes, it will show the two fields. And we also use a self-calculating total field. So based on the number attending, uh, it'll calculate a total cost in the field below. And then we're able to pass that value along to PayPal once they hit the submit button. Once they are redirected to PayPal, their total cost will appear at the top right hand side. And then their billing information that they filled out in the form will also appear. They can then sign in to complete the transaction. Starting at the Forms tab within your account, you'll click on Create a New Form and here you'll give it a name so we'll call this one event registration 2. We have the option to start with a pre-built form. Uh, we have a variety of templates for you to choose from anywhere from scholarship applications to mileage reimbursement forms. Uh, we also have event registration forms underneath marketing if you wanted to start there. But for our purposes we're going to start with a blank form. We'll go ahead and check the radio button for blank form and then click next step. This will take us to the second step of our form building wizard. So to get started, we're going to click the button for add section found at the bottom of the screen. Then we're going to give it a title and we'll call this sample event form. In the box below, you're able to add supporting text if you want to add any additional information in your section header. Go ahead and click the save button and add our section header to the form. And now we want to start adding our fields. So to begin doing that, we're going to click on the Add Field button, and that will bring up a variety of fields we have to choose from. If you roll over the buttons in the New Field section, it will give you a snapshot of what it will look like as well as details on what they're used for. First thing we want to do is add a Name Field, so we'll click on Name Field, and then we also want this to be a Required Field, so there's a checkbox for Required. Uh, you can also change the label name if you want to, but we're just going to keep it as Name. Uh, you can also change the field size and add additional details. So we'll go ahead and save this and add our name field to the form. Now we want to add a second field, so we'll go back to the Add Field button and we'll add an address field. This time we won't make it a required field, so we'll leave that box unchecked. Uh, you have the ability to change the country setting. You can put US, Canada, UK. Um, you can also accept addresses from other countries by using the Other radio button. Now that we have the details set for our address field, we'll go ahead and click the Save button. And now we want to add another field to the form. So we'll go down to Add Field, and this time we're going to add an email address field. There are a few different options for the email address field. Of course, there's Required. Um, there's also the ability to make it a unique field. So let's say you're having a contest and only want to allow an email address to register one time. You can check the Unique box, and that email address will only work once. We're going to go ahead and make this field required as we do want to obtain that information in the form and we're just going to go ahead and click save. Next we want to add a new section where we can find out if the person is attending the event, how many guests they're bringing, and calculate a total cost. We're now going to add our second section so we'll give this a heading and we'll call it event information and since this is going to be a multi-page form we'll want to check the box for start a new page next to layout and now we'll hit save. And then we want to add our fields for our event information section. So the first field we want to add is going to be a radio button. We want to make this field required, so we'll check that box. And then we also want to give it the label, uh, will you be attending? We now want to add our options. And the only options here are just going to be yes or no. So we'll type in yes on one line and then type in no on a second line. We have the details of this field finalized, so we'll go ahead and save it. Next we want to add a field to find out how many guests that they will be bringing. Once again we'll want to add a field, but this time we're going to choose select list. 
and we'll give it the label number attending. We'll then want to check the box for required and then we're going to start adding our options. So we'll allow our attendees to bring up to four guests so we're going to enter one, two, three, and four all in their own lines. Now we also need to associate a price with each of these guest totals. So to do that we'll click on the box for use separate values and let's say each ticket costs $10. So we'll enter a value of $10, 20, 30, and 40. We'll now use what's called conditional logic by clicking on the conditional logic button at the bottom. And we want to show this field if all of the following are true. And we want to say if the field that says will you be attending is yes, then we want to show this field. If the user selects no in the previous field, this field will no longer be shown. And finally, the last field we want to add is a number field. And this is where we're going to calculate our total cost. We don't want the user to be able to change the total cost as calculated, so we'll check the box for read only. We'll then give our field a label, call it cost, and then we're going to change the currency to dollars. We'll also want to add in a calculation so we can total up the price at the end. So to do that, we'll click on the use calculation link. Then we're going to choose our field that has the option values in it, and that one is the number attending. And now that this build is ready, we'll go ahead and click the Save button to add it to our form. The last thing we want to do before moving on to the next step of our form wizard is to click on the Form Extras button at the bottom. Uh, we can change the layout here to one or more columns. We're going to keep it as a single column. We can also add a Progress Indicator bar and a Save and Resume link. The Save and Resume link allows a user to save their progress and come back within seven days to finalize their form. You can also edit the submit button text and here we're just going to change it to uh, register now. And the last option is to add CAPTCHA which you really don't need to use. Uh, we have behind the scenes systems in place to help prevent spam in your forms. Now that we have all of our fields in place we can click on the next step button which will take us to the third step in the form building process. Be sure to check out part two of three of the Intro to Formstack webinar series where I discuss security features, email notifications, and third-party integrations.